now we'll move on to high dynamic range so we have the highlight the shadow the white and the black the slider in the high dynamic range section is used to bring back details into your raw image so if your image has too much highlight like this if your image is having too much highlight you can recover details in the highlight section of your image by moving it to the left like this if you move it to the left you are going to recover details and bring out more details in the bright areas of your image now for the shadow if you move the shadow down like this you are going to increase the shadow you are going to darken the shadow area of your image if you move it like this you are going to recover details in the dark portion of your image <laughs> but you can see it's going to flatten the image and that's not realistic so if you are moving this just move it slightly to recover details in the shadow area of your image now the white the white slider controls the white point of your image which is the brightest point of your image if you increase it you are going to increase the white point meaning you are going to make more portion of your image white that is brighter and if you reduce it you are going to recover details in the white area so we are going to reduce this to minus 100 the highlight you are going to reduce it also to minus 100 then the black is the darkest point of your image is the opposite of the white if you move it to the right like this you are going to recover details in the dark portion or the darkest portion of your image if you move it to the right it's going to flatten your image if you move it to the left it's going to add contrast to your image so for this you are going to slightly move it to the left like this minus 20 is okay so that's all there is to the high dynamic range now we are going to move on to the clarity section so for the clarity we have some presets in the method you can choose the natural clarity the punch the neutral and the classic you have to try this out in real time to see exactly how it affects your image so if you increase the clarity is going to increase the contrast at the edge of your image so if you increase the clarity like this it's going to increase the edge contrast everywhere there's edge it's going to increase the contrast at that area if you reduce it it's going to soften the edge like this so this is exactly how it affects and these are other methods you can try the method to see exactly the difference because you see this punch is somehow giving the image a dreamy look this somehow stylized you can use it after editing your image this is not advisable when you are just balancing the raw image so you are going to set it at natural i'm going to reduce this to zero for this particular point of the retouching process now we have the structure if you increase it, it's going to add the structure to your image. You can see exactly how it works in real time, meaning it's going to give more structure to individual pixels. And if you reduce it, you see the effect in real time. So this is good when you are sharpening or adding that point to your image. Right now, you're going to leave it at plus 11, somewhere like this now that's all there is to clarity we'll move on to the haze for the dehaze section you can increase the dehaze amount to remove any haze if there's haze on your image and if you want to add haze to your image to acquire or achieve any stylized effect you can do it like this so this is exactly how it works if you have any hazy if you are shooting in a fog environment and you have haze on your lens you can use this slider to adjust it this image was shot in the studio so it doesn't have any haze so we are going to re reduce the amount to zero just like this you have the shadow tone is on auto you can set it manually 
so that you can choose a particular tone for your shadow but for this we are going to leave it on auto is because it's looking all right and that is all there is to the dehesed section from that we move to the levels the levels adjustment is present in almost all video editing photo editing and graphic designing softwares now the levels has three sections we have the dark or the shadow area right at the extreme left corner we have the mid tone this is called the gamma slider this is the mid tone area this slider controls the mid tone and then we have the white point right here if you look at the levels you can see that it has this histogram so if you move make adjustment right here like this this anchor point below here is the dark point if you move the dark point to the right you are going to increase the black point it's very very similar to this black point we have in the dynamic range it's very similar to this black point so you can do that right in the levels also and this is in the rgb section so if you move this slider you can use it to add contrast to your image like this if you move it you are increasing the black point now if you move the one at the top you are going to reduce the black point is very very similar to the dynamic range section here very similar to this slider right here very very similar so we have the midpoint where if you move this midpoint right here you are going to darken the mid section of the image if you move this you are going to brighten the mid tone area this brightening of the mid tone area this is darkening of the mid tone area you can see what is happening in the histogram right here so for this image you are going to leave it or let's darken it a little bit we are going to darken it a little bit the white point if you move the white point like this you are going to increase the white point by brightening the brightest point you are going to increase the brightness of the brightest point of the image and if you move this you are going to darken the brightest point of the image so we are going to darken it a little bit so this can also be done to the red channel the green channel and the blue channel the effect is very similar and this can be used for color grading but for this particular section of the raw image processing we are not going to do anything right here i'm just going to make adjustment to the rgb section which is the tuna range section you can also use the hand picker tool here you can use this picker tool to set the point if you choose this point as the darkest point you can see the selection is going to make you can do the same thing for the brightest point if you choose this section for the brightest point you see exactly what it does you see exactly what it does so we are going to reset this and then we are going to manually add it slightly like this so you have several option to make adjustment to your image in the levels adjustment section so that's all there is for the levels now we go to the curve the curve also is very similar to the levels but for the curve instead of targeting only the darkest point the brightest point and the mid tone we have option to target any other point on our image you can create point by clicking on the curves like this create point so that i can make particular tuna adjustment to a particular area of the curve and one of the most popular way of using the curve is to add contrast to the image so if you create one point like this create another point like this you can create the popular s curve by moving the shadow down and taking the highlights up like this so this has to add contrast to your image this obviously too much so we are going to return it now we are going to return this as well so that's it and we can also use this to make other adjustments to our images like this so it is the rgb curve and this is how you use the rgb curve this is the brightest point this is the brightest point you can increase the brightest point by moving 
the slider or this point to the left like this and you can also move it down like this to increase the brightness move it here to darken move it here to increase and by creating this point here you are going to adjust only this area like this why this goes this other area goes in an invert way but if you remove this point you can see exactly how it's going to affect the overall image if you create a point right here you can see exactly how it works so the curve is a very very sophisticated and very complex adjustment option in your photo editing software so we are going to go more in depth using the curve as we go on in the editing process so this is the rgb curve this is the luma curve it affects only the luminosity the rgb affect both the color and the luminosity that is the color and the brightness while the luma affects only the brightness you can see exactly how that affects your image this only affects the brightness or the exposure without altering the color why this affect both the color and the brightness at the same time now we also have the red channel the green channel and the blue channel and you can use the curve to color grade your image we'll go more in depth on this area of the curve as we move on with the course and you can also use this picker tool to pick a particular section of the image if you move over this hand picker you see the particular tonal range of the image in real time if you click on a particular area you can come and move it up or move it down like this so if you want to target a particular area just use this hand picker and target that area this is the mid tone this is the shadow this is the darkest point and like that so that's all there is we are going to reset this and that's all there is to curves in capture one and the vignette is for stylizing your image and this is not necessary for this particular section but you can see if you move it to the left you are going to add a dark vignette if you move it to the right you are going to add a white vignette that is exactly how to use the vignette and we have methods the elliptical elliptic on crop you have the circular on crop and the circular so you can try out these other options to see how they affect your image they are just different styles that you have to explore to see how it works in real time so that's all the risk to the exposure section of the capture one to tap bar now you can also add more tools by right clicking add to and you can see you can add any other tool and you can remove you can remove a particular tool let's remove this vignette into if you click right here you can add the vignetting tool back so you are going to search for it vignetting and it will come back like this you can remove any tool and you can customize the interface to your taste so now we are going to go to the color tab Then for the quality, you are going to change it to by cubic sharper for a sharper image. You can see how sharp our image is right now. Very sharp. Then you are going to click on save. 
find a folder where you want to save and your image has been saved to that area so this is the end of the retouching course if you have any inquiry you can reach out to me on instagram if you have my whatsapp you can contact me on whatsapp also for those of you that are very busy offer retouching services that is you can send us your image and then we edit them for you high-end retouching at a very affordable rate so even after learning this if you want us you can edit your images for you just reach out to me on instagram if there are other stuff you need you can reach out to me on instagram if you have any question you can ask me on instagram see you in another one